Our goal is to make this new kind of ethanol practical and competitive within six years. <laughs> By applying the talent and technology of America, this country can dramatically improve our environment, move beyond a petroleum-based economy, and make our dependence on Middle Eastern oil a thing of the past. The president's call for greater diversity in energy sources, such as homegrown fuels like ethanol, to help power our cars and trucks was music to the ears of American automotive manufacturers like General Motors. GM plans to produce 400,000 flexible fuel engine vehicles this year, which are able to run on E85 ethanol or straight gas or any combination thereof. Well, what 85 means is 85% ethanol, 15% gasoline. So by the very nature, you're reducing your gasoline consumption by 85% if you run on E85. But what's also exciting is uh, ethanol is a renewable resource. So unlike petroleum, it grows back every year. Most of the flex fuel vehicles GM and other manufacturers make are trucks. So to build awareness, GM sponsored the recent Flex Fuel 250, a NASCAR truck series race at Daytona. All biofuels will help us reduce our dependency on foreign oil. And in today's climate, that's probably as important as you can get. But also the environment. We all want to do the right thing for the environment. Biofuels, E85 in particular, reduce CO2 emissions, reduce particulate matter, and just an overall healthier package for, for this country. Several years ago, the country of Brazil decided that it wanted to be energy independent and aggressively promoted the use of ethanol over petroleum. Now, as a world leader in ethanol production and consumption, 90% of Brazilian service stations offer ethanol. Brent Dewar spent many years working in Brazil for General Motors and says that nearly 90% of the vehicles they currently sell there have ethanol or gas-compatible flexible fuel engines. When I was in Brazil, the principal source was uh, sugarcane alcohol uh, because their, their principal crop was sugarcane. And this country currently is corn, but it could be potatoes or switch grasses. And it's that ability to create ethanol from a cellulose space. And uh, we need to get that production, which is some of the incentives that the government has talked about, and then build the gasoline infrastructure so consumers are not inconvenienced once they understand they want to go 85 capable. Currently, there are about 600 service stations in the U.S. that offer E85. Though that may not sound like a lot, it's nearly twice as many as two years ago. And many states and the federal government are rolling out incentives for more service stations to make E85 available. Automotive and energy companies stress that biofuels are just some of the alternative fuel sources that they hope will someday reduce our reliance on oil. If you're interested in learning more, check out livegreengoyellow.com. I'm Andrew Schmertz.